Project Lawful aka Plane Crash by Arwain aka Eliezer Yudkowski and Lynn Tamande. Thread 1, Mad Investor Chaos and the Woman of Asmodeus. Episode 33. Carissa said from the beginning that they should tell Keltham about Atolmans because they shouldn't be keeping any secrets from him that they don't absolutely have to. But this is over her head, presumably. Are you all right? She says quietly to Keltham once they're to all appearances alone. Not really. Keltham considers saying how much he doesn't like the thought of having been spied on by this particular non-abstract person while he was with Carissa. And then the thought occurs to him that if this isn't already bothering Carissa, he'd rather not remind her to be bothered by it. How? How weird was that? How out of character for reality as you know it, on a scale of zero to twelve? Good question. Uh... There being secret, lawful, neutral gods is not out of character for reality. If I'd had occasion to think about it, I'd have thought, yeah, probably some gods have reason not to tell most mortals they exist. Such a god having taken interest in this project is not out of character for reality. Chelish senior leadership is people like Contessa Lurilatha, and if I imagine her reacting to a secret, lawful, neutral god representative showing up, probably she would... React cooperatively, we don't want big messes either. Maybe just tell security he's authorized to be here and to stay out of his way. All of that is, I wouldn't have predicted it, but only because there are a hundred things about as predictable and I can't keep track of all of them. The guy himself was weird. I don't know how I imagine people who are members of a secret order, dedicated to a secret god who go around preventing catastrophes, but... But he wasn't how I imagined that. And the fact that your god interfered is weird. I'd expect. Usually, when gods both want to intervene in opposed ways, they hash it out privately and only one intervenes. It's cheaper. You don't visibly see gods at cross-purposes much. But this is much more important than most things, and prophecy's broken, and it's plausible they aren't at cross-purposes that it was both necessary for him to be invisible and for him to be caught. So, maybe four or five on that scale. Right then. It was weird, but not the parts he thought were weird. At least that's not meta-weird, because that's what falling into another world should be like. Does our relationship permit me to lean into you and get a hug while we're not otherwise engaged in cuddle room activities? Hug. Sigh. I still have three more spells, Keltham says after a while. It does not actually make sense for me to feel a sense of doom at that. And yet... Well, we're not going to get any less doomed if we wait. Find another security officer or wait for the previous one to come back. Yeah, that security officer isn't coming back soon. Or in fact, at all. How many ways is Ferrer Mayol pissed? Let's count them. Mayol sure is. First... The decision to tell Keltham that him being evil himself wouldn't show up in his own aura. It has the short-term benefit of not making Keltham wonder about his own apparent neutrality. Its disadvantages include that they're going to have to conceal Ione's aura so she doesn't look lawful evil. That if they succeed at shifting Keltham more evil, and then he looks at himself, he's going to spot the lie. And above all, that it is a lie, which Sever said to hand out sparingly around Keltham and under centralized supervision. And Mayol seems to recall saying that Sevar was now in charge of that. The wizard didn't even have to make up any answer about that. He could have just shut up. Second, volunteering to Keltham that they did already know he was lawful neutral. Maybe no clerics at the villa happened to prepare Orosite that day. Wouldn't that be simpler? Hmm? Keltham possibly bought the excuse, but they sure have been giving him multiple excuses lately. Hmm? Third, telling Keltham that they're working to identify the symbol and will inform him as soon as it's known. Cheliax is now permanently committed to preventing Keltham from getting a glimpse of Abadar's symbol in any context that associates it with Abadar, because it would not have taken that long to identify. They could have said they were unsure about Osarian, and if Keltham would start imitating their treatment of women, which Savar happens to have spouted on about and which Keltham seemed sympathetic to. 
This is partially on Sevar for not thinking fast enough, but it's mostly on the security guard for having wedged Sevar into a bad position by bringing up that they knew it was a lawful neutral god at all which is what required Sevar to come up with instant answers. Fourth, failing to remember the existence of Otolmans' oracle. Sevar forgot, yeah, and he's not happy about that either. But Sevar's not the one whose job it is to have combat reflexes and figure out immediately what needs to happen when Keltham starts casting Invisibility Purge. Any one of these mistakes in isolation could be a blemish on an otherwise acceptable record. In combination, it means Ferrer Maillol directs three other security wizards to burn this one almost but not quite to death over the course of an hour, and then, rather more injuriously to him, send him back with a request for a replacement security officer and a note that this one is unsuited to complicated deceptions requiring fast reaction times. Maillol would do it himself to vent some of his frustrations but he is more busy than lesser beings can understand. As for what Keltham is cleared to know about Otolmans, he's cleared to know the minimal facts, the fucking halfling slave more competent than his own security wizards by virtue of talking fucking less and only when spoken to already said, and there's no need to clear him for more than that. The last one's an illusion? I am actually not thinking of what it might be. I know a bunch of third circle wizard illusions, Major Image, which does better adjustable illusions like Minor Image, which you already saw, Displacement, which makes you appear to be in a slightly different place than you actually are, Invisibility Sphere, Dream, which lets you send short messages to someone in their sleep. Probably one of them is also on the cleric spell list, and I'm just forgetting that. When it's been a little, she steps outside and summons another security so they can go ahead. Keltham casts his third circle cleric illusion spell. The room around them catches fire. Carissa hisses and starts a spell before realizing it's illusory fire. It stretches on beyond where the walls of the room are, though you can sort of still see them. It is accompanied by illusory, agonized screaming. Most of it is wordless, hoarse, barely human. Some of it is more coherent and verges on comprehensible Taldane pleading. Please, please, I'm sorry. No, it kill me. On the ground in front of them, a man is engaged in trying to drag himself across the flaming ground. His skin is raw and bloody and occasionally burns right through to the bone, though the injuries close up when they get that serious. He's in enough pain that his muscles are spasming and his limbs don't quite obey him. He's not screaming, but just gasping hoarsely. The sound is unforgettable. Carissa Savar has very good spellcraft, and it's easier to think about spellcraft than about other things. So the main thing she is thinking is that this spell is, evidently from watching it cast, one of those two minutes per caster circle spells. This is important, or his god wouldn't be showing it to him. Any negative effects it has on him should already have been taken into account as an acceptable cost. Keltham tries to look around, very briefly. It's still enough to get a general impression of things. He looks at Carissa, who doesn't seem to be in visible emotional difficulty, because six years at the world wound, presumably. Please look around to see if there are any clues and then turn this off, Keltham says, and shuts his eyes and puts his fingers into his ears. Illusion spell. This isn't real. A movie of a bad thing that isn't actually happening. Security dispels it, exchanges glances with Carissa. Well, the look around for clues is nice because it means she has a minute to compare cover stories. Some people are kinky, is not going to cover it. A badden is an obvious option, and the other obvious one is Zon Kuthon. A badden is more of a lie. There's other stuff about a badden which would establish that it doesn't really involve very much being on fire. They could filter it. Zen Kuthon is known to Keltham to have an inverted utility function. He's lawful evil, but not the way Asmodeus is evil, in the was good and got turned to the exact opposite sense. And that does look like the exact opposite of good. She can also buy their future selves option value, say that she thinks it's probably Zon Kuthon, but didn't see anything definitive. She pulls out a notebook and writes down some irrelevant things she happened to see, because taking notes is what she'd be doing if she was learning something new. 
And then she pats Keltham tentatively on the shoulder and, if he doesn't flinch, hugs him. He doesn't flinch when touched. Adath Alani may not have seen illusion spells, but they have at least seen movies. Though no movie of anything like that, of course, it would leave scars on whoever saw it. But some things are worth getting some scars, even on your mind and core. And Keltham's god evidently thought this was that important. I hope you know what that... Keltham starts, and then realizes that if he continues with this ill-advised speech business, he's going to vomit, so he stops his breath and clamps down on abdominal muscles instead. I have a top guess? I think, so Zon Kuthon, the god who wandered into the void and values the opposite of everything he did before, has a country, and claims its people when they die. It was real? That's happening right now, somewhere? I don't know, but if I were a god, I wouldn't do that to make any point at all except, except itself. And if it's real, that's, that's what it'd be. Keltham is not a keeper, and therefore he is going to do something epistemically questionable. And while not assigning bad probabilities over the branched possibilities, he will mentally live for a time inside the possible world, where that vision definitely hasn't happened yet, until he stops feeling like he's going to throw up and come to terms with the other branches later. I have my obvious theory about what that means and why my god would do that. Both of you come up with your theories before I state mine, then we all state what our theories were before we heard the other person's theories, Keltham says. Raise your hand when you have a theory, and once we've all raised our hands, security goes first. Obviously this affair has reached a state of urgency, where any pretense of security being dispassionate, not really present observers can be discarded along with all other pretenses. Your god wants you to negotiate for Cheliax to do something about that, and thinks that once we have the metalworking and riches of Dathilan, we'll be able to... Carissa. He's going in reverse order of how much he trusts the people present to speak their answers uninfluenced by who spoke earlier. So, your god is lawful neutral. And you're at least, by self-identification, evil. And, uh, I think your god is pitching being lawful neutral, saying to you... Okay, you mostly only care about pursuing your own interests and dealing fairly with others, but that mostly might matter a lot. Here, what are you going to do about that? Carissa is not sure that is a good direction to push Keltham in, but they need to reconsider a lot of strategy, if Abadar is going to be this pointed, and it might be time to start angling for the plan where Keltham leaves and takes her with him, at least to be sure not to burn it. Persuasive pitch, if so, Keltham says, learning as he speaks to speak and clench his stomach muscles at the same time. I'll pause to take my expensive shirt off first not to ruin it, and I'll want somebody to pay me afterwards, but I will, in fact, jump into water holes to save drowning children. My theory is that Zonkuthon of the Inverted Values is the god that has an effectively unnegotiable incentive to oppose everything we're doing here and want us all dead. That the vision uniquely identifies Zonkuthon, though why it had to come in that form, I don't know. And that we're being warned that the security precautions we had at the time, I got my spells this morning, plus any further precautions we'd take predictably to my god without this vision, are not adequate to navigate that with acceptable casualties. Can Zonkuthon just take people? Could he take somebody here? Especially if they're lawful evil? If his clerics attack us? Or does Asmodeus... Asmodeus has the stronger claim on our souls, says security firmly, and then shuts up. It's harder to get in trouble for saying too little. And your god has on yours, your, their cleric. I have no idea what would happen if Zon Kuthon tried everything he can try, but Asmodeus is stronger than him. I have two more spells, fourth circle abjuration, fourth circle divination. I'm going to just go ahead and cast those now, in that order. Maybe one of them sheds some light on things. Keltham has discarded any senses of oncoming doom because the current situation is more important than feeling doomed about it. Fourth Circle Abjuration, go. Spell immunity, says security, instantly. Makes you impossible to target with one specific spell of Fourth Circle or lower of your choice. I am not thinking of an obvious spell you're supposed to protect yourself from. I'd go scrying if we weren't already unscryable? Malediction, but they're absolutely not admitting the existence of malediction. Yeah, if it's meant for a specific thing rather than just for added protection, I don't have a guess what the specific thing is. The spell is lingering invitingly in the air in front of Keltham, refusing to be flicked free of his fingertips. 
Does it take the input, the spell on me right now that's affecting my mind or perceptions, or the spell that's on me right now? The second one works. Huh. I didn't know you could target like that. Keltham realizes he no longer understands what Carissa just said. It takes him a few moments to remember that one spell that was still on him. Keltham is an idiot. Well, he was distracted, but being distractible is part of what being an idiot is all about. You definitely gave yourself immunity to something, but I don't know exactly what, because you didn't specify the spell with the spell form. You specified it. Her fingers are moving without her conscious attention. Did you specify the spell effect I already have ongoing, or something? Security guy whistles. Literally everything else about this situation is not my specialty, but this is. Guess who just lost their share language spell? Keltham says in baseline. And yeah, sorry, I didn't understand that. Some words, maybe, but not the sentences of Taldane just yet. Carissa was pretty chill about the torture, but she's awfully disappointed. About Keltham not getting to appreciate her spellcraft. Oh, well, that's what he did. Do you have share languages? Nope, and it wouldn't work on him if I did. Tongues. No. Does anyone else on duty? We're running the duty roster a little thin right now. Oh. Are they all in a lot of trouble? Probably they are all in a lot of trouble. Carissa isn't even sure what she did, but she's sure some of it was very stupid in hindsight. Can you prep it? Her thing, I just need an hour. And by then, probably six dozen paladins of Iomedy will enter through the sewers while Aridin returns from the dead just to animate all the furniture and make it sing songs. If it wasn't meant to negate a spell already cast on him, like a mind-controlling one, in Dathilan, this would be a message to the effect of, think about what spells could be cast on you that you wouldn't want cast on you, maybe. It's a spell that requires you to know what's coming, forming a requirement of prediction. Then Keltham catches the word Iomedi. That sounds potentially urgent. Comprehend languages, gesturing the spell slowly so they can see it. Iomedi? Keltham says after casting. He can hear now, but can't speak. Carissa can cast comprehend languages, too. Oh, good. Uh, your spell immunity should wear off in an hour or two, and then we can give it to you again. I observed some guy mention Iomedi, with possible inferences not ruled out to me, including that Iomedi's faction might also attack here, or that it might be invited to likewise oppose Zonkuthon. This seemed relatively urgent, and was the reason why I cast my comprehend languages instead of reserving it further, though it's also nice to speak in a language where sensible meanings can be conveyed in shorter codes. Speaking in baseline, not just thinking in it, helps reimpose abstraction, which is a form of distance. Some part of him was starting to go a little Taldane from speaking it all the time. I'll repeat exactly what I said, but it was of no such urgency. Sorry, Sever asked if I could prepare tongues for you, and I said, Sure thing. I just need an hour. And by then, probably six dozen paladins of Iomade will enter through the sewers, while Aridin returns from the dead just to animate all the furniture and make it sing songs. Which was not a genuine prediction. Iomedai might ally with Asmodeus against Zon Kuthon for this, but it'd be a direct god negotiation. We can't expedite it. I don't think her faction would attack, and the illusion vision definitely doesn't reference her faction. What the guy said containing Iomedai matches the non-understood sounds of the last sentence containing Iomedai, near as Keltham remembers. Fair enough. I should have asked whether my earlier interpretation was at all plausible. Probability distribution over Zon Kuthon attacking here within the next day, next eight days, next sixty-four days. Security will let Carissa generate numbers for the madman, thank you. That's good, because there are things that are obvious to Carissa that wouldn't have been obvious to her a day ago about the giving numbers social ritual. Keltham's hypothesis is a useful one for him to be on, and she wants to encourage him in it, but if she makes it seem too probable, then they look stupid for having missed it. Let's say 4%, 10%, 40%, she thinks at security. Uh, 4%, 10%, 40%. Given the message from your god, we thought it lower before. Given the message from your god, we thought it lower before. That's higher probability than I was expecting for a first guess that wild. Do Zon Kuthon attacks happen a lot around here? Ugh. This wouldn't be expected to be Carissa's expertise, so it'd be weird for her to be answering, even though she's either better at or less scared of improvising in Kelthamish terms. No, I can think of a handful of known instances in the last two centuries. 
But direct divine intervention in general is incredibly rare, and there have been three instances of it here in the last 24 hours. No. I can think of a handful of known instances in the last two centuries. But direct divine intervention in general is incredibly rare, and there have been three instances of it here in the last 24 hours. And the reason direct divine intervention is rare is because the gods pay each other, so only the one who cares most intervenes. And one case where that might be expected not to hold is a god who can't reasonably do value trading with the other ones. That's just analysis, and she may as well do it herself. And I'm not thinking of any reasons for the spell that aren't your god is predicting or requesting conflict with Zon Kuthon, so fundamentally that's got to shake out to he starts it or we start it. That's an odd way of forecasting and I'd have to think about whether or not what you just said makes any sense, but at least it's not obvious nonsense, to bump up the entropy of all your probability distributions after encountering a series of low-probability events, if that makes sense when I say it to you in baseline. How long do I have left before Taldane goes incomprehensible to me? Seventy minutes, which is also the duration of your spell immunity, so someone can prepare another share languages for you, and have it ready by then. Thank you. I apologize for requiring that resource of you, especially since the way in which it came about, that of my attempting to immunify myself against any economic magics cast on myself without my knowledge, reflected both my ignorance of whether to trust you and my stupidly forgetting the spell already on me. Last spell cast now. Keltham casts his fourth circle divination. Maybe it brings answers, if it's the most powerful answering spell. Some spells have more of a subjective sensation to them than others. This one has a strong one of magic radiating out like pressurized water, stripping away whatever it encounters. It doesn't do much, though. A drawer concealed in the desk glows, and there's a sense he could look in a direction that's none of the three dimensions he's familiar with. We're going to have to revise all materials referencing Glimpse of Truth to claim it's just a more powerful invisibility purge that also finds magically hidden things. So he's not trying to stack it with Abadar's truth-telling, Maybe it's mostly meant for seeing enemies lurking on other planes, but he doesn't need it now that we've got a forbidden sup. Call it, a uh, Glimpse of Beyond. There's a drawer, and it's gone. A concealed drawer in that desk right there was calling my attention. Keltham points it out. Security casts Dispel Magic and then uses a mage hand to tug it open. It's empty. Detects secret doors and secret compartments, and people polymorphed into other people, though the main thing it's for is detecting people hidden in other planes. I'm not sure if that part of it would work with the forbidden up. I felt like I could look in a new direction that wasn't the standard three space one time, but the spell ended before I could explore that. There wasn't anything there, in that direction, that I saw. I wish I'd known to use that spell before the forbiddance went up, just in case there was something there before. I'm very much playing amateur security at this point, but, like, maybe check everyone here for people polymorphed into other people if you don't do that on a daily basis, or if you've got a version of this spell that lasts longer, look around for secret doors that aren't on the consensus social reality map here. Keltham sighs. You'd probably have thought of that already, I'm guessing, but trust but verify. I should say it aloud myself, even if I think you've already thought of it, because security. We do routinely check for secret doors and for polymorphed people, security confirms, and would be routinely checking for attackers or spies from other planes, if not for the forbiddance. All right, that is everything I had planned. I think next I, well, next I talk to Ioni briefly, and then go to bed. He needs a book of the standard cleric spells, one that goes up to at least fourth circle. Hopefully Ioni didn't use up all her book borrows for the day. Though if Ioni doesn't have comprehend languages, then he needs a translator. Carissa or security? Which would Ioni prefer? Keltham's guessing security. They're more professionally obliged to keep confidences. You okay sticking with me slightly longer as a translator? Keltham says to security. Should be brief. Not a problem. Good night, Keltham. Until later, Carissa. On net and in total... It was still a pretty nice day in terms of direct causal impacts on me, if not in terms of the net total direction of all the evidential updates I executed. Same to you, I think. Keltham turns to go, gesturing security to precede him. You're the one who knows where to find Ioni, or find somebody who knows where to find her, Keltham says. 
Security will lead Keltham to Ioni, in the library, since apparently she has to stay there. Carissa will ask other security to make her invisible and go with her there as well, in case anything requires her intervention. Ioni almost starts a genuine, if faint, smile on seeing Keltham, before Ioni sees the security with him. Keltham, she says. Please ask her if she's got Comprehend Languages prepared, or if security needs to translate for her. Ioni does not have Comprehend Languages prepared, as it happens. Wanted to ask you a question about a book, but only if this is a good time, Keltham says. It's a fine time, Ioni says, after the security officer translates, correctly decoding this question as being about the security officer's presence. Any time is a good time for questions like that, now that people have seen me do it once. Gratitude for inconvenience incurred. Book containing a maximal number of descriptions of cleric spells up to fifth circle. His god may not have played its full hand. And it seems good to know about the fifth circle, too. Books about magic aren't always... Let me think. There's... What is there in the Ostenso library? They have a copy of a book she knows about that includes all known cleric spells, including up to ninth, including some Asmodeus's clerics can't get. Is there a book that only lists cleric spells that Asmodeus's own clerics can get? Either that doesn't exist, or Ioni needs to know more about it. Security needs to give her some sign about whether that book is available today, or if all the copies are out of the Ostenso library, but Ostenso can request they'll be returned soon, or, or what? One if book available, two if not, a kind of book that can be retrieved, three if the only copy is out of the Ostenso library, but they can ask for it back. Four, if Ione should go on thinking until somebody can give her more instructions. They're going to want it to have a couple modifications to say glimpse of truth that aren't yet completed, so... Point three? Um, Ione says, glancing at security, and then sighs, as if giving up on something. In the character she's playing on directly admitting in front of a chelish government official that Ioni retrieves books from other libraries. Ostenso is a wizard academy. There's only one compendium of cleric spells in there, and somebody currently has it borrowed. Uh, you could ask security to send a message to the library to get the book back, and I could try again later. Somewhat suggestive of them wanting time to quickly reprint something. Actually, though it's a bit post hoc, Keltham thinks he'd have guessed a priori something like a 30% chance that a real wizard library would have no unborrowed books on all cleric spells, and it's not quite fair to say 100% if they want to fool him, because they could choose other means of fooling him. Call it 2.5. 1. You don't actually want to ignore your 2.5. 1 likelihood ratios? They can logarithmically add up pretty quickly. Thanks for looking, Keltham says. Anything that just has a brief list of all the cleric spells up to fourth circle by name, even in passing? I... I don't think I can look through all the contents of all the books that narrowly, if it's not what a whole book is about, Ioni says honestly. I hate to ask this, Keltham says to both Ioni and security, but can somebody maybe just flatly write down a list of a bunch of cleric spells they remember up to fourth circle, with like one-sentence descriptions of what they do? I can. Ioni says without hesitating, because she doesn't see security telling her to pretend like she couldn't do that. Come back in, maybe an hour? All right, I'll just ask for some paper for notes then, and find other things to think about for an hour, so he can forget what he saw as much as possible before he has to think about it anymore. What else is there to think about instead? He at least needs to itemize all the things he wants to ask Carissa about sex, while they're not actually having sex. But some other things happen today, too. And he can work out a rough general spell-granting code for attempted communication with his god, in advance of knowing which exact spells he could ask for to signal various conditions. Off with Keltham. The fourth circle divination Glimpse of Truth is called Glimpse of Beyond, and detects polymorphed people, secret doors, and things hidden on other planes, security tells her once he's definitely gone. The books will back you up by morning. Keltham's God isn't known, otherwise just show us your first draft, or... Don't lie to him about anything, unless you've checked it with me first, Carissa adds. If you wish to support this AI reading and others like it, please visit patreon.com slash askwhocastsai. 
any help is appreciated. And thank you to executive producer John Doe 7776059. 